I thought I'd do quite a simple video today where I just simply talk about the anatomy of a gas mask and what all the parts sort of do. Because often I'll refer to parts but I've probably not really explained what each part does in detail. So we're going to look at a couple of different examples of gas masks because most gas masks don't all include the same features. So what we're going to look at first is a Finnish M61 which is an American M9 mask clone and then we're going to look at some of the features it has. So obviously the most important thing of a gas mask is the filter. I don't have a filter on me right now because we're going to talk about the mask, but obviously all the chemicals that are trapped in the filter so they don't get into your lungs, all the nasty sort of dust particles that are trapped in the filter so they don't get in your lungs, they're trapped by the filter. So you have your in filter intake on the mask, the filter's attached to that, when you breathe in all the bad stuff is trapped in the filter, the clean air goes through the mask. So let's have a look at the actual mask itself. So what you have here is an intake, this is a 60mm one but this can be 40mm, assuming it's not a cheek filter mask. What you have is always somewhere where an actual external filter attaches to the mask. Now obviously the filter does all the work but you have a screw thread typically here. You've got a female screw thread there and you have a male screw thread on the filter. You screw the filter in and what you simply have is this sort of either metal or plastic which holds the filter in and then you've got a rubber valve on the inside so air can't flow backwards. That's not really necessary when you've got a filter attached but they normally put them there anyway. The exhale valve is the far more important valve. Obviously what you also have is straps on the mask unless you're using a Soviet style helmet mask which I'll get onto in a moment. Most masks use a strap system where you put the straps on and you adjust them to your head nice and simple. Obviously you've got your lenses, your goggles, whatever you want to call them the visor if it's a single sort of panoramic lens but in general these are made out of either plastic, glass, polycarbonate modern masks normally use stronger materials like polycarbonate and they're more likely to have bigger sort of panoramic lens visors rather than individual eyepieces but these are fairly straightforward they're crimped onto the mask on a lot of older masks which is a really good way of doing it because it makes a really good airtight seal and is very sturdy and basically these are just there to so you can see through the mask, chemicals can't get into your eyes and they should be to a decent strength that they're not going to break really easily. Right, this has a cover on it but under here is the exhale valve. Now the exhale valve is a feature on all masks basically. Uh, well there's a couple of masks I have which are really cheap nasty masks that don't have exhale valves but exhale valves are important. This is where when you breathe out, you exhale, the air comes out of from the mask so you can see into the mask there now. I've got that open. So the point of the exhale valve simply is the air can't come in obviously. The valve is set up in a way that if you breathe in when you've got the filter on the path of least resistance is to go through the filter. Uh, like obviously the valve will pull tight if air tries to come in. You breathe out this way and the, fil uh, the valve opens to let air out. So the important thing is the valve assembly is done in such a way that air goes in through the filter but has to come out here so it keeps the air flowing through the mask properly. So I'm just going to pop this bit of rubber back on. There we go. Now this one's got an interesting one as well because it's actually designed so you can angle it if you really want to rather than just having it coming straight out directly in front of you. Okay, so let me fold the straps over the mask and then we'll have a look at the inside of the mask. Now this mask is slightly dusty so apology for that, but what you have here is an oral nasal cup and this is on a lot of masks and the entire point of an oral nasal cup is designed basically so when you breathe out the air doesn't go straight up and fog up the lenses because obviously there's a problem with masks um, that I'm sure a lot of you know if you've used older masks where they fog up so they came up with lots of ingenious ideas to try and fix that some work better than others some masks have a hybrid idea where they try things so you've got your big oral nasal cup there and the idea is obviously your nose sits in there and your mouth's in there when you breathe out that is trapped in there and has to go into the exhale valve if you breathe in, the air can come through. So basically what happens is when you inhale from where the filter should be there, what happens is the clean air comes out of these far sides. Um, what's inside this mask is what's called a Tissot system, T-I-S-S-O-T, -S -S named after a French guy who invented it. And what you have basically is the air comes through, and this is why this mask has a bulky nose, so the Tissot tube runs through the nose. Uh, the air comes through both things, and that cold air, when you're breathing in, goes straight up onto the lenses. If you've ever been in a car and it fogs up, you know, you put your blower on and you blow it onto the windscreen to defog that, it's the exact same process because you can't wipe the insides down of the inside of a mask, so you need a way of keeping it clear. 
that's what the Tissot tube system does. You breathe in, the air is blown up onto the lenses, then the oral nasal cup stops your warm breath from going back up onto the lenses, but that cold air, once it's been gone into the mask from the first bit of your breath, then flows through the valves on the oral nasal cup that you can hopefully see there, um, so you can actually inhale it. So that's a really simple system. Now I'm not sure what the technical name for this is, but I call it an inner mask. Now this little ingenious bit of rubber that runs around the outside rim of the mask is a really good idea. Now the problem is some masks don't have this and it's really a shame when they don't because this uh, sort of rubber rim is really really good for actually making the mask have an airtight seal to your face even if your face shape isn't ideal for the mask. So. This mask does fit me fairly well, but the idea is this thing means that if the mask size is a bit out, it fits better. This is one of the problems. The German M65 doesn't have a particularly good one of these. And that's the reason for a lot of people, even if they get one that should be the right size, then they can't make an airtight seal because they don't have the sort of Germanic enough face it was designed for. Whereas, for example, the Israeli M15 does have one of these. So what that means is if you wear the Israeli M15, and you bought it in the same size as the German M65, you're going to have a much easier time getting the Israeli M15 to make a good air seal to your face simply because it's got this in. Um, it's obviously designed to work one way, your face presses against it there, but obviously it kind of creates an air cushion there, so you know it traps the air in. Very simple design, but works very well. Some masks, like uh, where I've complained about before, the PMK and GP7 have one of these that's far too big and then that causes problems because it gets in the way of your face when the like, rubber's that thick. But the idea is actually very simple and very good. Okay, so I wanted to get a mask out that has a voice diaphragm on that I can disassemble easily to show you how a voice diaphragm works. And we also have a different kind of mask here as well. This is one of the very few masks I have that has a rubber filter intake rather than the plastic or metal one, so that's an important note. But all the same features are here if you look at this mask closely. You've got your filter intake there, you've got your exhale valve there, you've got your lenses obviously there. This is a helmet style mask with a rubber hood rather than a actual um, sort of strap system. If I just unfold the mask there, you can see there as well that you've got your Tissot tube system that runs under the eyepieces as much as they don't really go up onto the eyepieces. Um, and as you can see, you've got your um, sort of exhale valve on the inside there, and you've got your speech diaphragm there. So the main thing I want to show you on this mask, obviously, is the speech diaphragm, because the other one didn't have one. So speech diaphragms, also called voice emitters or voice emitters, um, are basically what makes the speech more audible. Because if you have a big rubber mask on, and there's only a little exhale valve on it, when you talk, it's going to be. <laughs> because people can't really hear you because the sound of your voice has to get out of the mask and obviously by the time it's done that it's lost a lot of um, sort of volume so that's where the voice emitter comes in the idea is that it amplifies what you say so they're very easy to disassemble on Russian masks provided the parts haven't rusted or anything else so you have your cover that is just literally there to protect it um, you see some of these have lots more holes in some with less holes in it doesn't really matter as long as there are holes uh, for it and, but this is the important bit, if I can get it to come out, there we go. What seems quite flimsy here, I'll put the mask down a second to show you this in more detail, is an o-ring for it, and a, it looks quite dirty, but essentially a piece of plastic film covering a little disc. Now if anything this is a weak point of the mask, but this is actually, I've never have had a Soviet one so far where it's broken, so as much as it might be a weak point, I've never had a problem. But if you know how a drum works, you beat that, it makes vibrations, obviously sound is vibrations. When you talk, your voice, the sort of vibrations from your voice are essentially hitting this, making this membrane move on it, and that membrane amplifies your voice. It's a bit of a complicated process, um, but it's in essentially very simple. So, as you see, that's just a hole to the inside of the mask there. If I wore this now, it wouldn't make an airtight seal because obviously there's not a valve there stopping air from not coming in. So to put this back together, the O-ring goes in first and sits there like that. Then we have this. Obviously you want the side, that side facing outwards where there's a bit more of a distance, but I don't think it would make a really massive difference. So you have that in there like that, then you just re-screw this in. Obviously assembling and disassembling voice diaphragms is different on some masks. Some masks use a thin metal plate, I've not really 
in my opinion, they're not really any better or any worse than these. I guess they're stronger, but I've also had problems in the metal ones where the metal becomes slightly bent and then it breaks the airtight seal and then you have to kind of try and super glue the metal plate down back into the mask. I had to do that with my Finnish V3 mask. So, you know, there's advantages and disadvantages to every system, really. Can't stress that enough of gas masks because some people are like, oh, you know, this respirator that does this is so much better. There's not really a perfect respirator in the sense that some masks will have some really innovative features that they've done well, but then they can be clumsy in other ways and other things. So I'm yet to see a perfect gas mask. Um, as I said, the Avon CT12 is my favourite gas mask so far out of the lot I have, but that's out of the ones I have. And I like that because it's fairly lightweight, it's very comfortable, you get a good field of view, you know, it ticks every box I really want from a mask. But I, I don't have every mask ever made. So, you know, there could be better masks than that. So then the main points of a mask, what I'm just going to do now is going to go and have a little think and see if I can bring back any more masks that have some interesting features I haven't talked about yet. Okay, here I have my broken MSA Millennium MCU2P, or whatever they called it. Um, and this is kind of an interesting mask because it looked very sci-fi and futuristic for when it came out. So what we've got on here is, again, you've got your inhale port there. You have got a voice diaphragm, I think, here. The voice diaphragm, I think, here it's got two. I think some of these had a second filter port there, or you could unscrew it and make a second filter port. I'm not entirely sure. I said because this mask doesn't work, I've not really investigated into it too much. Um, but what is interesting is you've got, I think that was to connect that to um, if you had a voice amplifier built onto this voice diaphragm. So basically, it's like an electric powered one, as far as I understand, so that megaphones your voice even more if you needed that. Um, but this obviously has the panoramic lens that I want to show you, which means that you've got a really good field of view in this. Now, this is always a bit weird and discoloured, because you've basically got, I think it's a polycarbonate cover for it, and then you've kind of got like a smaller, like weaker, kind of rubberized one inside. And from what my understanding is, it's that you could use the mask if you wanted to without the polycarbonate cover, and you're more vulnerable to breaking it, but it's flexy, so you can flex it into rifle scopes and things, which is kind of a good idea, but for the most part they come with the polycarbonate lenses on that protect it. So it's an interesting idea, haven't really seen that done much elsewhere. Uh, you've got your big XL valve assembly there, and what you've got here is your drinking tube. So that connects to a specialist bottle cap, uh, to allow you to drink water without contaminating the water ideally, although some drinking tubes leave a lot to be desired on gas masks. And there you have your actual sort of drinking tube on the inside. And most masks work via gravity. You attach that in, you hold your canteen upside down above your head, the gravity forces the water through the drinking tube's valves, and it comes out that, sort of, you suck on that straw, there you get it, and then when you're done, obviously, you turn your canteen back the other way, you know, reseal it or whatever. Um, so yeah, this mask does pretty much, would be a good job if it worked. As I said, I'd need to get straps for it, but when I've tried to hide it, like hold it tight into my face like this, and breathe, even if I cover the hood, I can feel air coming in from a variety of places. So, I don't think this mask is going to work, sadly. But, because, as I've said, because I'm in the UK, it's really hard to get American masks because of all the laws around America not wanting to export army surplus gear. Uh, you just take what you can find, and if somebody sells a slightly damaged mask on eBay for 20 quid, yeah, I'll pick it up just for the fact that I've got this American mask now. So, there you go. Hopefully this might have been a bit long-winded, but you have now kind of understood all the components to a gas mask. I've not shown a filter because you all know what a filter looks like if not watch my other videos where I talk about filters in more detail. But hopefully this has shown you a bit more sort of all the different components. I'm sure I'm still missing some. You might have on a gas mask and what they do, but mostly inhale valves, exhale valves, oral nasal cups, the different kinds of lenses you can have, you know, voice diaphragms, drinking tubes, all that sort of stuff. The main components. So now if you've seen this video and I start talking about a drinking tube, whatever, you know what I'm on about without kind of having to look into it a bit more detail. That's sort of the anatomy of a gas mask, but to have a gas mask that simply works, all you actually need is an inhale valve and an exhale valve. That's about it. Um, and then obviously, well, obviously we're a filter attached to the inhale valve, but and obviously a lens to see out of, but in terms of just for survival reasons, all you really need is a really crappy lens or little tiny eyepieces to see out of. 
and an inhale exhale valve, obviously inhale valve attached to the filter. Everything else is kind of for comfort and extra features. Drinking tubes, that's a comfort thing, or if you're operating in a desert for a long time and you need to drink. Um, obviously voice diaphragm so other people can hear you more clearly. You know, big lenses like this so it's less claustrophobic to be inside the mask for a long time. You know, there's all sorts of different features. Obviously, you've got like your chin support in there with a little sweat groove in it. The idea being that when you um, sweat, the sweat goes through that little hole and then that helps drain out the exhale valve as you're breathing out. Which, again, is quite a sensible way of doing it because if you see there, the exhale valve is gravitationally down from that part and that part's on the chin. So if you're sweating and there's perspiration, gravity means it goes down and it goes out there. You don't need the fancy crap they put in the Scott GSR to do that, and it's a lot more comfortable doing it this way. So, there you go. Hopefully this video has been helpful if you are interested in lots of different features various gas masks have, the anatomies of a gas mask, etc.